You know, I probably shouldn't be allowed anywhere near eBay. Because when I seen this vanilla V20-9 personal computer come up for sale, I had to grab it. Listed as an 8088, I suspect what we have here is actually based around the NEC V20 processor, which is a clone of the 8088, and the Dash 9 probably running at 9 megahertz. So I thought I had got myself a little bargain here. A vanilla PC, googling I can't find anything about it, and it is definitely branded vanilla. It even came with the original vanilla PC diagnostic discs. Thing is though, I might finally have bitten off more than we can chew here because this vanilla also came with one of the worst corroded battery packs I have ever seen. So while it might appear to be nice and clean on the outside, what is waiting for us inside is nothing short of a nightmare. I don't think I have ever seen battery corrosion just as bad as this. But we'll give it our best shot. Let's get this motherboard out and take a closer look at just how bad it really is. So the offending battery pack, it used to live in here. And I did try to pull these wires off the header here on the motherboard, but those have welded themselves on there with the corrosion. So I just wind up cutting the wire. Not that we could uh, ever reuse this anyway. And the most annoying thing about this is that these are just AAs and it would have been really easy to remove these. In some ways you can almost forgive the Varda battery damage on motherboards. You know those batteries are generally soldered to the board and the majority of people won't have the tools to desolder them. Yes you can't cut them off but um, you know if you want to do it right you would desolder it. The likes of this though would have been so easy to remove to save this machine. But let's see what we can't do with it anyway. So our display adapter has a different type of screw in it. And that maybe suggests this is aftermarket. It is a monochrome monitor after all. And this display adapter, as far as I know anyway, this is to the Hercules standard. We do have an MFM hard drive controller, and you can tell that because of the two ribbon cables. And our hard disk drive, which must be aftermarket because Interestingly, it sits slightly proud of the rest of the case. I don't know whether it just hasn't been installed properly. Or maybe it's just not suitable for this actual chassis. But it definitely sits proud so you can't actually fix the back of the case in place. At least our expansion cards seem to have been saved. From any battery corrosion. Let's try and get the hard drive itself out. And we have a Rodime hard drive. Never heard of that manufacturer before. But then again, it is the first MFM hard drive I have ever touched. No idea of what size it is. But I suppose if we wanted to test things, we could maybe pull out one of the Spur 286 or 386 motherboards I have, put that hard drive controller in it, and uh, see if that hard drive would spin up and post. This front cover looks as if it wants to come off. I don't see any screws holding it. It's just a couple of tabs here up against the caddy for the floppy drives. Well, there's that off. And all of this is just going to lift away. Disconnect the fan. Oh, I need to disconnect these ribbon cables. Going to the floppy drive and disconnect the power connector. 
which seems to be just a standard AT, although it is missing a couple of the lines. Some corrosion has definitely got itself onto this metal housing here. And I can see a little bit in there within the power supply. But that is the least of our problems. Because look at the state of that. Honestly, I'm not sure where to start. I'm hopeful that this just looks a lot worse than it really is. And one thing that I think we've got on our side here is that all the vias appear to be filled. So I'm hoping with that and the fact that the corrosion doesn't, well, I was gonna say it doesn't get to the edge of the board, but it does, doesn't it? I was hoping the bottom side of the board will not be that bad. But in reality, if we're gonna try and save this, we're probably gonna wind up removing most of these components. Hopefully I can get parts off here without legs breaking off them. And I do think the first thing I should do is soak all of these socketed chips with our contact cleaner to see if we can't get them out. And there are a couple of NEC branded chips in here. And speak of the devil, there it is. NEC V20. So yes, that is our processor. No doubt that used to be the processor's crystal. You can't even make out anything on that now. That's how bad the corrosion is. Right, anyway. Need to get this motherboard out of the case. I wonder if we contacted Bonsai Seals and quote our service number. Would they be able to give us any help? What do you think? Right, please don't be that bad on the bottom. And no, the bottom of it looks pretty good. Little bit of corrosion up here, but we can deal with that quite easily. Just look at how bad that is. Unbelievable. So first things first, as I say, a lot of contact cleaner in here. And hopefully, if we let that sit, for a few minutes, that'll let us get those chips out easier. Starting to look better already, for goodness sake. And I can even make out that our crystal here was 28.6 something, something, something megahertz. Well, we're getting closer. One part in particular that I am concerned about is this. Because I'm assuming that once upon a time was a, a paper sticker on there with something written on it. So this might be a custom part. Equally, this Faraday chip here. I dare say if bits like that have failed, it's gonna be next to impossible to get replacements. Let that soak in for a while. Then we'll try and remove these components. And then we need to have a think about how we're gonna treat the rest of this. All right, that's been soaking there for about five minutes or so. Let's see if these want to come out. Oh, that is crispy. That's not good. Part of that socket has snapped off. Hopefully it's just the legs have broke underneath and they haven't pulled themselves through. But we'll find out soon enough. Unfortunately I bent a leg on this but hopefully I can straighten it. It hasn't snapped off. And hopefully I can save this chip because I can't at all make out what's written on it. Completely wore off. My old nemesis. 
Let's see if we can get this Faraday chip out without causing any damage to it. Son of a... This is going in the bin. The chip came out okay, but exactly, exactly the same thing that happened with Alice and the Mega 500. Bin. As for treating the rest of this nasty gunk, I think what we'll do, first of all, is drown the thing in white vinegar. Then we can start trying to get some of this off. Now, one problem that we're going to have is that the solder mask is just going to disappear. As you can see. But we are going to have to get all that off. And all this is going to have to be cleaned up. All that corrosion. Now I have taken high resolution photos of the whole board. Before uh, doing that. But there's just nothing we can do about it. The corrosion has completely ate into the solder mask everywhere. So first things first. Good scrub with a bit of vinegar. Then I think what I'll do actually is take this into the house and just wash it with hot water. Then we'll give the whole thing a bath in IPA. And hopefully that's enough to get the corrosion off. All these sockets need to come off. The PLCC socket actually looks okay. Albeit I'll maybe remove it anyway and try and treat any corrosion underneath it. I'll have to get new sockets here, obviously. Look at the state of that there, it's ridiculous. And the pins on them are just gone, completely gone. All of these passives here will have to be replaced, so I'll need to try and figure out what they all are. Albeit, it shouldn't be too hard to do. Lots of work ahead of us. Might not get all this done in one video. A good dosing of white vinegar and it's fizzling away as you would expect but we have to neutralize the mess from the leaking batteries and this really is the best option the ISA slots didn't uh, totally get away with it there's a little bit of corrosion at the very end here, albeit it is very, very minor compared to the rest of the board. So the battery just died as I was cleaning that up there. But one thing that fell off was our vanilla sticker that was sitting there. Um, probably had to come off anyway because it was baked in that corrosion. But look what's underneath it. Tulip computers. So this thing obviously originated from the Netherlands and uh, is a rebranded Tulip computer for the UK market. And I just wanted to show you that before I have to take off that uh, bit of solder mask just right down the middle of that there. It's all bubbled. I can push it there. I can even feel some of the vinegar underneath it. So it definitely needs to come off and it's just going to ruin the logo. But we have to get all that old nasty stuff off. Well the board's had its bath, it's now dry again, that's the next day. I give the big uh, ground plane here a bit of a polish up, just using the steel wire pen. That's the most abrasive one I had. And it has scratched the surface of it slightly, but to be honest, it took that to get the corrosion off. It's just so heavily corroded. But there still is quite a bit of corrosion to deal with, and most of it is underneath the sockets and components. So I'm thinking I'm going to remove all of these sockets. Well, maybe only need to remove up to about row 11 or 12. No, actually. That one there needs to come off. 
That one needs to come off as well because it's damaged. You know what? Just remove all the sockets because I have replacements for all of them coming anyway. These ICs here are going to have to come off. The legs of them are quite heavily corroded and we need to treat the board underneath them. And equally, all of this. What I'm going to tackle first is try to get these sockets off. So let's try and start with this socket here. This one. And I need to remember there is a little ceramic capacitor going across there. It's a 101. I'll have to figure out the value of that. So considering just how crusty this is, I think we're going to have to try and apply fresh solder to each one of these. And then that should let us desolder it. I think my nozzle's blocked. Yep. That's better. What's happening here, I think, and why that nozzle got blocked, is that some of those pins are actually broken off. So when you're sucking it, the pin itself is going up inside there and getting stuck. I think that one just did the same thing. This side seems to be coming off easier. The pins on that side were a bit green. But hopefully there's no damage to the board. Quite a few of those pins are still connected. This is going to be the problem, you see, because of the corrosion on the other side. The heat isn't going to flow as well. So this thing isn't going to suck the solder out as well. What we may wind up having to do here is break up the socket on the other side and use a bit of hot air. But I'll give it one more go with this first. Right, let's see if that socket wants to play ball now. Yeah, no problem. Wow, look at the state of that under there. It is not looking pretty. So all that solder mask is just gonna fall off. As you can see. Just try the fiberglass pen on the more delicate stuff. And then one thing we definitely need to check before we fit a new socket anywhere is that we still have connectivity between the hole and whatever trace it is connecting to. There's one here just at this corner that looks very dodgy. Doesn't seem as if that's connected. The rest of it on this side looks okay. On this side of the board at least it doesn't look too bad. Doesn't seem to be any broken traces or anything. But we will double check everything with continuity before fitting the new socket. So as you can appreciate, I have quite a bit here to be getting on with. I'm going to remove all the rest of these sockets first. And I said earlier I would try and keep the PLCC socket, but no, that's not going to be possible. One of the pins in this corner here has broken. So I have a new one of those on order as well. It's going to be a couple of days before all the sockets arrive, so that'll give me time to get all this off, tidy up whatever corrosion is left, test all the traces and things to make sure we have continuity where we need it, and then it'll just be a matter of reassembling. Well, that is all the sockets off. The jumper blocks also came off, and unfortunately that's where the damage is. This area here was really heavily corroded and more or less all the pods just at that point there are gone. Now it's not beyond us to fix it. All it will need is a couple of little patch wires on the bottom of the board run from pins when they're pushed through here just to these various little filled vias. Down this end of the board as well where jumpers came off, similar story. 
there was quite heavy corrosion here as well. This is where the actual battery itself connected. And uh, likewise, pods completely gone. So we're gonna need a few more jumper wires there. The rest of it, despite how it looks, actually isn't too bad. Most of it tests out fine on the meter. So I am hoping that we're just getting away here with mostly superficial damage. But so far, I am about nine hours into this project. So it's looking unlikely today that we're gonna get this finished or even get it to a point where we can test it. I am unfortunately still waiting delivery of a few parts. So what I thought we'd do to finish off this video is pull out another spur motherboard and we'd use that to test our expansion cards out of this machine. So we could test the MFM disc controller and test this Hercules graphics card. And that'll also give us the opportunity to try out that monochrome monitor because, well, I'm interested to see if it's amber or green phosphor. I just noticed there is a little bit of dulling on these pins here on the graphics card. So let's just address that first of all. So the natural instinct here might be to go in with the fiberglass pen to try and polish this up. But in doing that, we would risk damaging the gold contacts here. So instead, what I want to try is just a pencil rubber and a razor. Because supposedly this works really well for cleaning up these pins. And it certainly seems to be doing the job. Plus the eraser is soft enough not to cause any damage. That looks pretty good. So I got that little trick from Gadget UK watching one of his videos. So thank you very much Gadget because that works perfectly. And I suppose since we're at it, we'll just go over this one as well. This looks fine though. I mean, there's no sign of any damage on it, but just to give it a bit of a clean up. Okay, so I've pulled out the 386SX motherboard. We have our graphics adapter in there, our MFM controller, the MFM hard drive is sitting up there and our vanilla monitor. So let's see if any of this is going to work. Well, I can hear the HV starting in there, so that's seemingly a good sign. A hard drive has spun up and seems to be running. No picture. Possibly bad display adapter, is it? Or could it be as stupid as our brightness and contrast? Oh, there it is. Amber phosphor. But seemingly working anyway. Let's jump into the BIOS here. I don't know if you'll be able to make it out or not on that large amber section there, but there definitely is a bit of screen burn going on here. I can see a bar running along there. A couple of uh, vertical bars as well. And I can just about make out where text has been. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but um, it certainly does have some screen burn. And it obviously is quite a tired monitor. Because if I'm turning that brightness up, that's about a level of brightness there that you'd want but you can see we're getting a bit of distortion in the image might just need a recap internally to bring it back but um it's 30 plus years old and uh, still working so can't complain too much right our hard drive I have been able to find the characteristics of this drive online. It's 50 megabytes, which is, uh, well, seems quite big to me anyway for an MFM drive. But it's 872 cylinders, seven heads, a 
Our pre comp is 650, landing zone 0, and sector 17. I think I'm reading that right anyway. And sees that as 51 megabytes. Just interested to see if it will boot, if it will do anything. And seemingly doing nothing. Hard drive controller failure. So either the information I found online for a hard drive characteristics are wrong, or perhaps there's something wrong with our hard drive controller, or perhaps the MFM drive is just not compatible with this 386 motherboard. This is the first MFM drive I've ever played with, so if anyone has any suggestions, maybe let me know in the comments section. But for now, I'm happy enough that our monitor works, display adapter works, and at least the hard drive has spun up. And since we're testing stuff, I thought we should also test this power supply. Now there is a bit of corrosion evident here on this bottom metal shield but um, I can't get this thing apart these two screws here do not want to come out I may wind up having to drill these out because as you can see it's just chewing up the actual head of the screw Nope, absolutely not. But having a close look in here, that corrosion is limited to that bottom metal bit there. It's definitely not up on the power supply itself. So while I will have to get this apart to clean that up, I think we'll be safe enough powering this on. So let's try it. Now it'll need some sort of load. I could use that MFM hard drive, but no, I don't think so. Just on the off chance, this is putting out crazy voltages. Let's just use an old IDE hard drive. Powered on there. And I'm just gonna switch it from the wall. Hopefully it doesn't explode. 5.12 volts um, maybe a little high but not concerning I don't think what about 12 volt 11.7 ish yeah not too bad I suppose actually we should have checked it from here shouldn't we there's also negative 12 and yeah that's fine okay so the power supply is good all the capacitors in there look fine. I don't see any signs of leakage or anything, albeit you'll be able to see it better when I do finally get this apart. And then the only other item is our floppy drive, which when I initially took it out, had something rattling around and this fell out. So let's see if we can figure out where this came from. Well, looks like this with a wee bit of foam in there. And a bit of foam there. Looks like that's where that came from. Oops. That is meant to be in there. Well, it won't be hard to get a wee bit of foam just to put that back on there again. So what we have here is an NEC FD1057. And that is seemingly a 1.2 megabyte floppy drive. Which, to be honest, is a little surprising. I half expected it just to be a double density, 360k drive only, but uh, well, there we are, not complaining, another 1.2 megabyte, five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Well, I think that is enough for today. This video is now sitting on the half hour mark, which is definitely long enough. I have lots and lots to do here. So next time you see this board, 
hopefully I'll have all the sockets back on here. We'll take a look at the damage here a bit closer next time and we'll go through the process of repairing where the traces have been split or where the pads are missing. All it's going to be is jumper wires on the underside of the board. I need to cover all this exposed metal here and it's just going to be the green nail polish. Still waiting on the postman to deliver me some uh, more replacement parts. The resistors, I don't have all of the values in stock so I've had to order some of them. Just going to swap out these little transistors as well. Unfortunately I cannot make out these capacitors here which presumably are tantalums but I cannot make out the values on it, it's just gone. The writing's gone so hopefully those are okay. I'm not going to remove these just now. Yes there is quite a bit of corrosion on the legs and whatnot but I have had a quick check around on continuity and there's nothing broken. So what I want to do first is repopulate everything and then we'll test it. But that's for next time. As for this video, if you enjoyed what you've seen, I would appreciate the thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe so you don't miss the next part. Still plenty more yet to come on CRG. And I'll see you next time.